Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. In my last video I talked about the Women's World Cup Readathon that is hosted by Booktime with Alice, Skelly Damling about the books, Alice and the Giant Bookshelf and the Rambling Raconteur. I take part in that readathon and I will root for France because France was assigned to me in the first round. I will very probably read The Secret History of Man by Mohamed Mbougar Sar, the winner of the Prix Goncourt in 2021. This book is not published in English yet. It will be published in September, but this is the German version that was already published last year by Hansa about it. But now for you, 10 books that are dealing with women's football or women's soccer, as they say in the US or in Canada, in preparation or during the World Cup or after the World Cup. So here is my top 10 list with top 10 women soccer, women football books. Some of them are biographies of the greatest players, some of the greatest players of all time. Some other books are about women's football, about the history and about the presence, present of it. Uh, the first book is about the history and about the present. We have different stories. It's a beautiful book. I read it a couple of years ago. It's from 2000. 12, no, 2017, actually published by Icon Books. And this is Under the Lights and in the Dark, Untold Stories of Women's Soccer, written by Gwendolyn Oxenham. I read this book a couple of years ago and it tells us very different stories about women footballers. One from the United States who was playing, who was playing in New York in underground leagues. She was playing with men, moving from one part of town to the other and they were playing in halls and uh, very sweaty, very aggressive kind of style of football. And she made it finally to the American women's, to the USWNT, the United States Women's National Team. There are also stories of Vera Boquette, for example, a player that I've met personally and I interviewed personally, one the greatest Spanish player in the beginning of Spanish women's soccer. She has also played in Sweden and that's where I met her. Uh, the second book is a biography. It's by probably until now, although they became European champions last year and Beth Mead and Ellen White are big names of the sports right now, but the greatest history, historical name of women's football, though she's only 45, 46 years old, is Kelly Smith. And her story, a footballer, my story came out in 2012 by Bantam Press in England. Kelly Smith has played many years for the Arsenal, she also in London, but she also was a professional in the United States. And this book starts actually in a very interesting way because Kelly is in the United States. She's playing for the Boston Breakers. She's calling her dad in England and says not much to him other than, Dad, please come and take me home. Because Kelly Smith uh, at that point is in a, in a very low point in her life. She has become an alcoholic and she doesn't, she's not able to live with alcohol anymore and she understands that she has to do something. So she calls her dad and that's how the book begins in a very um, beautiful way and she speaks very openly about this but also of course about her great success, about her, she was called the Zinedine Zidane of women's football once and Kelly Smith is a great athlete and I actually saw her farewell game in 2016 or 17. I was in London and I had the opportunity to go to Boreham Wood in the north of London to see Kelly's farewell game where, she, where I think uh, an international uh, team played Arsenal. Uh, was a great experience there. The second book, uh, second memoir here is another player that I admire a lot and I would love to interview her still today. So if you see this, Hope, call me. This is a memoir of Hope by Hope Solo. Uh, American legendary goalkeeper, arguably she or Nadine Angra, or both of them are the best goalkeepers in the history of women's football, I think. And Hope Solo is a very, very strong and beautiful character. She had, she had a very difficult life and she's talking openly about this, about abuse in her family, about the real violent fights that she had with her brother, about her homeless father, about bankruptcy in the family, but also making her way to the United Women's National Team in, uh, and becoming a world champion as well. So that is Hope Solo. Uh, together with Anne Killian. They're also always, almost always co-writers with these memoirs, with these biographies, but I will mention the co-writer here, if that's okay for you. The next book is um, Forward, another memoir by Abby Wambach. 
that was published in um, 2016 by Day Street Books in the US. Abby Wambach is a genius. She is a legend. She uh, is a striker, a forward. She has scored so many goals. Not so many goals as Christine Sinclair of Canada. She's the world record holder of scoring goals for the national team. And Christine, with 40 years old, will play the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand for Canada. But Abby Wambach, uh, there's one scene that I always think of when I think of Abby Wambach, and that is the World Cup in 2011. USA is down by one goal to two in extra time. 120 minutes are played and it looks like US is going to get out of the tournament, the big favorites. Pass off to Rapino, and everybody's got a bomb forward now. Rapino gets a crossing. It's towards one. U.S. go to the final, but then Japan wins on penalties against the United States. Um, another great player, and she's probably the player that came into social media, that made, that became a social media star, a glamour star, maybe the first real glamour star of women's football. She's also playing in the World Cup now. She was called by her fellow teammates in the U.S. WNT when she started out as a young woman. She was called Baby Horse because the other player said, this girl runs like a horse, looks like a horse is running. I'm speaking, of course, of, Abby, of Alex Morgan and her book in 2015 published by Simon & Schuster is called Breakaway Beyond the Goal. Alex Morgan, great player and a great role model for millions. She brought the game to the millions. Uh, another player that actually I can say I'm proud of who has blocked me on Twitter. Hi Carly! That's Carly Lloyd and when nobody was watching my heartfelt journey to the top of the soccer world by Carly Lloyd published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt in 2016. Carly Lloyd is a great player in 2015 she was the uh, deciding factor that made the US world champions because Carly was really the, the uh, decisive person. She scored goals in almost every game, even in the finals against Japan, 5-2 for the United States. And then in 2016, she was again nominated for one of the best players in the world. And I, on Twitter, I said, I just said, well, I don't think that she belongs there in 2016. She's a great player, but she doesn't belong there in 2016. And that had a uh, consequence that Carly Lloyd blocked me. So now we get to some books that are dealing more with the history and with the uh, current situation of women's football. Great writer from The Guardian in England. She's a football writer. She's the women's soccer football writer for The Guardian in England. This is Susie Rack, or as she's called as an author, Suzanne Rack. A Woman's Game, The Rise, Fall and Rise Again of Women's Soccer, published by Triumph Books in 2022. In this book, Susie Rack is really describing exactly the thing that women's football once was extremely popular and that was about a hundred yeah a hundred years ago 100 110 years ago in england in scotland it was super popular but then it was almost forbidden and for example the german federation forbid its federations in the 1970s uh, in the 1960s and 50s until the 70s it forbid its clubs to um, give their pitches to women to train. Only men were allowed to train on the pitches of clubs in Germany. There's so much misogyny in women's football. This is a great issue here in that sports and that's one of the reasons I'm so interested in this. So and then, but then like in the 2010s, 2000, late 2010s, 17, 18, 19, especially in France with the World Cup and of course the Euros in England last year, women's football is on the rise because so many clubs, so many interests, economical interests have understood that you can make money and in the future a lot of money with women's football. There's a growth in that sports that is not possible anymore in men's football where we have reached the roof, where we have reached the ceiling and can't go further. Another great book by two journalists who are one of, yeah, belong to the greatest experts in the field from England and from the United States together working from England, Kieran Tavam and from the United States, Jeff Kasuf with a foreword by Kelly Smith. They wrote The Making of the Women's World Cup, Defining Stories from a Sports Coming of Age, published by Robinson in 2019. Great book as well. And 
The next book is another biography, the fifth and the final biography or memoir. This is a player I have met in Tooting in London at Chelsea Women's Premises uh, 10 years ago, actually from now. Uh, I was sitting and having a cup of coffee with her and I was so impressed of this woman. She is a lawyer. She was already, when I talked to her, a lawyer. She has played in the United States and studied to become a sports rights lawyer in the US and in the UK. Uh, she's so bright and she's so talented and she was so quick. Now she's uh, retired, but she is Enyola Aluko. Her book is called They Don't Teach This, Lessons from the Game of Life by Enyola Aluko, published by Yellow Jersey Press in 2000. 19. Read her story. It's also the story of a young British footballer with Nigerian background and all what that implies in difficulties as a girl coming to this sport. The last and the final book is for all you English fans. Last year England won the Euros. That was the first title that England won in international football as a nation's team since 1966. So they've waited for like 56 years for that, and they were singing Sweet Caroline, bam, 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 good time never seemed so good. Yeah, that was Wembley and then all the other arenas where England won their games. And this book is by a great English sports writer, Carrie Dunn. She's also in Australia now reporting about the World Cup. She has uh, written several books about women's football, but this one is called Unsuitable for Females, The Rise of the Lionesses and Women's football in England. So this is another take on the history and of the situation of football in England for women. And this completes my list of 10 books about women's soccer. I hope that you read one, two, three of them, or maybe you have already read, then please drop me something in the comments below. You can also subscribe to my channel and help me a lot. You can also slap a like, and I will see you soon in another beautiful video on this channel. Bye!